This is David Hofmeister's Unwind Your Mind Back to God, read by Tarana Singh. Today we continue Unlearning the World with Book 2. In Chapter 4, this is Section 1, Part 1. Delving into Form and Content, Part 1. David, I am glad to be here with all of you. It is a precious thing to come together with the intention of looking at the false beliefs in the mind. As the Bible says, Wherever two or more are gathered, there I am. When we come together with this purpose, It accelerates the process of outgrowing or transcending the ego. So I feel grateful. It takes a leap of faith to come. There is always a bit of uneasiness when you do not know the people. The ego's way to deal with it is to have a lot of structure to know what you are going to do ahead of time. Or repetition. The ego is big on ritual and method. To come together without a format is scary to the ego. I want you to feel free to say whatever comes to your mind so that we can go into it. If you have a reaction to something someone is saying, we can go into that. It is always a decision. Everything we feel is based on our own decision. Let's get into the metaphysics and try to understand what is going on in our own minds so we can understand why we are choosing what we are choosing. On a conscious level, it can seem kind of crazy. Why would I choose to be fearful or sick? It is strange of it is strange to think of choosing to be sick. No one in their right mind would choose to be sick. But you are not in your right mind when you are choosing sickness. Why would someone choose to be fearful? You are not in your right mind. We need to go into the metaphysics to see what is going on with decision and choice. The passage that is coming to me to use as our springboard is in chapter 24. The Goal of Specialness In the first couple of sentences, he reminds us of the goal. It is nice to be reminded that the goal is peace of mind. It is so simple. Here is a book with 1200 or so pages, but it all comes down to Forget not that the motivation for this course is the attainment and the keeping of the state of peace. Given this state, the mind is quiet and the condition in which God is remembered is attained. Text Chapter 24 Introduction There are some heavy-duty things in this chapter, but it starts off very simply with the reminder that peace of mind is the goal. In the second paragraph, he gets right down to the nitty-gritty. To learn this course requires willingness to question every value that you hold. That is very literal. When you really get into it, you begin to see that the course is very literal. 
No one can be kept hidden and obscure, but it will jeopardize your learning. No belief is neutral. Everyone has the power to dictate each decision you make. For a decision is a conclusion based on everything that you believe. It is the outcome of belief and follows it as surely as does suffering follow guilt and freedom sinlessness. Text Chapter 24 Introduction Wow! What an enormous passage! Decision is an important theme in the course. The final section of the entire course is called Choose Once Again. In it he says, My brother, choose again. And you will choose again. He is telling us all through the day that we have decisions to make. He wants us to get to the point where we can choose peace and to understand that peace is nothing more than a decision. The Holy Spirit, like the ego, is a decision. Together they constitute all the alternatives the mind can accept and obey. The Holy Spirit and the ego are the only choices open to you. Text, Chapter 5, Section 5 Even the Holy Spirit is a decision? The Holy Spirit is a decision and the ego is a decision. It is interesting to see that the Holy Spirit is a decision. If we are a mind with decision-making ability, then that decision is available to us every instant. Of course the Holy Spirit is a decision that brings peace to our awareness. That is pretty straightforward. The Holy Spirit is a decision and in choosing the Holy Spirit I will be at peace. Not in fear, upset, depression, anxiety or any upsetting emotion. So what is it that is preventing me from choosing that? That is a central question. What is it that seems to stand in the way of choosing peace? What about this other option for fear? He is really giving us a giant leap forward with this. He says that a decision is a conclusion based on everything you believe. Decision is the outcome of belief. Friend, whether I know what that belief is or not, David, whether or not I am aware of what the belief is, if a decision is a conclusion based on everything you believe, then you can see why this course requires willingness to question every value that you hold. Not one can be kept hidden and obscure because it will jeopardize your learning. Text chapter 24, Introduction It is crucial to hear that. If you have hidden beliefs, decisions will spring from those beliefs. Two paragraphs later, hidden beliefs are described as if they are warriors. Beliefs will never openly attack each other because conflicting outcomes are impossible. But an unrecognized belief is a decision to war in secret where the results of conflict are kept unknown and never brought to reason to be considered sensible or not. Text, Chapter 24, Section 1 There is a war going on in the mind. Friend, in the next paragraph, after that he says, All that is ever cherished as a hidden belief 
to be defended, though unrecognized, is faith in specialness. Does that mean we are giving our faith to specialness and making decisions based on a goal of specialness all the time? That seems so insane, because I can see how specialness is complete upside-down thinking and how it is hurting us all. David, can we see that? That is a good question. Can we see how specialness hurts us? Friend, there is so much going on in my mind about this goal of specialness. Can I recognize that it is an upside-down belief and just choose the goal of oneness? That does not seem to automatically block out this faith in or goal of specialness. There seems to be something else going on down there that needs to be brought up. It says here that all that is ever cherished is the belief in specialness. It is a barrier between me and everybody else. What I am trying to do is realize there are no barriers between me and everybody else. David The ego is the faith in specialness. But it seems to take millions of different forms. It seems like we are healing things one at a time. Healing this one and this one. It seems endless, like waves. You finally get through a whole wave and then you get the next wave and the next wave. I like to use the analogy of a skyscraper. We have to start at the top and go down, floor by floor, turning on the light. We also need to get to the idea that there is a master switch in the basement. In many parts of the course, he says it can take an instant. That would be like going down and flipping the master switch. Help me get in touch with this master switch. I do not want this to take forever. This brings us to the distinction between form and content. Jesus lays it out so simply by saying that the Holy Spirit sees everything as love. Everything is either love or a call for love. In the ultimate sense, everything is just love. The only judgment involved in the Holy Spirit's one division into two categories. One, of love, and the other, the call for love. You cannot safely make this division, for you are much too confused either to recognize love or to believe that something else is nothing but a call for love. Text, chapter 14, section 10. The ego sees attack. It does not see everything as love or a call for love. It perceives everything as attack and judgment. In the next sentence, we find out why. You are too bound to form and not to content. What you consider content is not content at all. It is merely form and nothing else. That is the reason. If you can really get at this form content thing and loosen your mind from the grip of being bound to form, then you can clearly perceive with the Holy Spirit and see everything as love or a call for love. Why is there such a huge, huge investment in form? It helps to go back to the overall metaphysics. If you can gather this theme into the overall picture 
of what Jesus is saying in the Course, it begins to make sense. The world was made as a defense against love. We will continue with this section in the next episode.